The Knights of Titan seem to have been winning their fair share of tournaments recently. Let's take a look by the army list run by the Grey Knights players, taking them all the way to the top. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Grey Knights, and in this video I thought we'd take a look at a whole bunch of armies that have done rather well for the faction in recent times, with a look at four top army lists and what's made them strong. In 10th edition, Grey Knights haven't really had the best start compared with most factions out there. Certainly at the start of the edition, they were very, very weak indeed. During their faction rules previews, everyone was getting very excited and saying they were going to be absolutely mad strong. Though when their full unit stat lines and their points costs were revealed, it seemed that Games Workshop absolutely had charged them a big premium for their teleport strike force movement shenanigans. Sure, the squads can jump all over the battlefield and pull off some very nasty movement tricks indeed, but unless they can use that absolutely optimally to keep on picking unfair fights as the game goes on, they might still struggle for the raw muscle and force weapon power to beat down the enemy. Currently, their big tournament win rate is around about 46 to 47 percent, slightly on the lower end of the 40k power spectrum, though not unusable. And it does seem that at least a fair number of people have taken them to success at grand tournaments. I've seen four top army lists since the balanced data slate came out. I feel like with the big reliance on movement tricks, perhaps more than data sheet power, they really feel like one of the armies that's going to be more high skill and there'll be a vast amount of difference from someone who just knows the faction inside out and what they should do against every opponent, versus people who are relatively newer to the faction or don't play as many competitive games with them. People still seem to be finding them interesting enough to put on the table though, perhaps more so than some other armies out there. They are towards the low end of the play rate spectrum for 40k in general, but it's still say that being played around about 18th out of the 26 factions in 40k isn't too bad, given that they're a slightly lesser played one comparatively. They definitely do have their weaknesses though, perhaps most obviously struggling to take down hard targets like tanks and vehicles, having to rely on mass force weapon attacks to get the job done, and even they might be kind of hard to deliver given that their teleport rules might allow them to get within 9 inches very reliably, but not actually reliably make combat. It means that often they might have to focus on absolutely just playing the mission and scoring as high as possible, hopefully outscoring the enemy. Having plenty of units that can bounce around the table doing secondary objectives and things is generally a big advantage for that, as is the 3 inch deep strike stratagem that they can pull off to get a unit behind enemy lines or to deploy a teleport homer or something. For perhaps the most staple unit choices for the Grey Knights, for the HQs it's Caldor Drago and the Terminator Librarian that are just outshining most of the rest there. They're both very good as we'll get onto in a second, and they'll be leading either the Terminator squads or maybe Paladins generally seen as the best damage and defensive units that the Grey Knights can bring to bear for the front line. Otherwise, I've certainly seen a lot of lists use a 10-man Purify squad with Castell and Crow, though it looks like only one of these four army lists chose to, and they're quite frequently backed up by assassins or other allies. In particular, the Kalidus seems to do well to complement their style of play, giving you yet another unit that can bounce on and off the board doing secondaries. Perhaps notably the most rarely played thing out of the Grey Knights unique units tend to be the Dread Knights. They're really not taken too much despite the big points decrease they got. I'd argue that they're not unplayable, but for most optimised army lists they tend to be not taken, versus all the other stuff that the Grey Knights can bring to bear. Let's jump into the army list though and see what real people are actually playing to success, and take a look at a few of the data sheets taken as we go along. This first list was by Victor Bergenholtz, who used it to take first at 2d6 Grand Tournament, going 5-0 in a tournament size around 40 players. This list is just putting the mass Terminators on the table, two enormous blocks of them, one squad of 10 Brotherhood Terminators and one squad of 10 Paladins, the Brotherhood Terminators taking Incinerators, plus their stock upgrades like the Banners and the Narthusium, the Paladins bringing four Psy Cannons. There's also two smaller squads of Brotherhood Terminators, again with their stock upgrades and the Incinerator. Leading them, there's Lord Caldor Drago, who seems to be almost auto-include for the Grey Knights now. Two Librarians with combi weapons for their big mortal wound damage. And rather than a third Librarian in this one, there's a standard Grandmaster with the Psy Cannon, and he takes the Sigil of Exigence to allow the units to teleport away when shot. I feel like the big 10-man Terminator blocks with characters make some of the best use of the Grey Knight movement shenanigans. With Caldor Drago, you could deliver one of those into combat almost guaranteed if you budget a command point reroll, and a great choice for using that Mist of Dimos stratagem on, or potentially deep striking a kind of hilariously scary threat behind enemy lines with the 3 inch drop stratagem. 
a pretty nice chance to put so many Terminators in a place where the opponent's going to struggle to deal with them that you might cause them some serious problems. Otherwise, there's a single strike squad with an incinerator. They often tend to get taken due to the sticky objectives type rule, which is often handy to have one copy of in an army list at least. Could be nice to mark your home objective with that before maybe teleporting elsewhere to put it on other objectives. And then they are backed up by some Imperial agents, a Kaladus assassin to bounce around and also ruin an enemy stratagem, and a cheap four-man inquisitorial henchman squad. 40 points worth of cheap screens or objective holders that are quite a good unit for doing secondary objectives as well. Not sure exactly what they were used for in this one, but they could be a choice for sitting on the home objective if the strike squad moves out. Overall looks like a pretty good example of a fairly cookie-cutter Grey Knight's army list here. Loads of Terminators with Drago and Librarians, and some supporting Inquisitorial agents. Perhaps the most different choices out there are the Grandmaster, and literally having this many Terminators, I feel like often lists might take something like 20 to 25, but don't necessarily break 30. The Brotherhood Terminators generally seem to be seen as the most well-rounded unit to have on the front lines right now, 210 points per 5 of them, or 420 for 10. They get a banner to give them extra objective control, so they're kind of immune to battle shock, plus they're OC3 each, which is rather nice. The Narthesium can allow them to resurrect a slain Terminator per turn, which is pretty big, and their force weapons are more threatening against heavier units than most, given that they get lethal hits on the charge, and that just makes them so much better against toughness 10-12 to 12 sort of vehicles. Perhaps a particularly nice unit to pair with Kaldor Drago, who can deliver them from deep strike charge fairly easily. Speaking of which, Drago just has an immense stat line, Fairly good shooting for a character, and 6 attacks at strength 8, damage 3 in combat, pretty potent there with the titan sword. His big thing is that you get to add 3 inch to a charge roll once per game, giving the unit a 6 inch charge out of deep strike rather than 9 inches, and if you budget a command point reroll for that you should get them into combat, one of the most reliable ways of delivering them. Otherwise by far the most commonly played generic character is the Brotherhood Librarian, he's got a sniping shooting attack and a little bit of melee, Though most people take him for the pretty terrifying Vortex of Doom, usually throwing 2d3 mortal wounds onto an enemy unit, occasionally 2d6 if they get lucky, though he does have the disturbing chance for it to bounce back. Doing this many mortal wounds in an attack that's not technically considered a shooting attack is pretty punchy as well. It's perhaps one of the Grey Knight's more reliable ways to stack damage on enemy heavy hitters, and it seems that they're considered efficient enough that some people just choose to run librarians completely on their own, deep striking as individuals. For our second list, this one's run by a Sam Nash, who used this one to take first at the Siege of Windsor GT, 5-0 in a small tournament of 23 players. Compared with the last list, this trades out a bunch of Terminators for a bunch of other Grey Knight infantry, with Interceptors and Purgation squads on the table. Again, the list is headed up by Caldor Drago and two Librarians. One of the Librarians has Sigil of Exigence once more, the other one gets first to the fray, that's the one that allows you to deep strike a unit turn 1 potentially, could be quite a big one for putting the opponent on the back foot. I kind of wonder if that might be used on the big 10 man paladin squad, that could be pretty intimidating just to have appear in the midfield or even make a lucky first turn charge straight away, they are very tanky with their minus 1 to wound. Otherwise though there's a single strike squad once more with an incinerator, good for those sticky objectives, and then this list makes it use of a lot more power armoured grey knights. Two units of five interceptors with their jump shoot jump shenanigans, pretty handy skirmishers that can move around the board very very quickly indeed without having to rely on the core mechanic, and then interestingly enough two units of five purgation squads, they've got considerably cheaper than they were earlier in the edition, and they're each equipped with four incinerators for maximal purging. They'll be able to stack some serious damage on any one wound infantry and can even target things that they can't see if they deep strike in, so enemy objective holders will have some trouble there. Can be pretty nice to threaten Overwatch as well, that many strength 6 AP 1 attacks, it's hard to ignore for toughness 3 infantry. This one also has an Eversaw assassin as well, which is kind of fun. A fast scouting assassin capable of blending more infantry, but also just a cheap loan operative is handy enough to have around. I feel like with so many small units to jump around teleporting around the board, this should be quite a good one for just scoring very very high, particularly with the speed of those interceptors, and putting down a terminator squad in the midfield with first to the fray. Certainly feels like he's to have the opponent on the back foot, and he might be able to pick them up with the mists of Dimos if the opponent does advance into the midfield where they're likely going to need to if they want to contest the midfield objectives. It seems that for your core Terminator army, the Brotherhood Terminators are maybe a tiny bit more popular than the Paladins, but they certainly get used as well. 
They both do have their advantages. The Brotherhood Terminators cost a little bit less and get the lethal hits on the charge. The Paladins cost a little bit more, get more special weapons and hit on a 2+. Plus. And the big advantage is on the defensive, as they get minus 1 to wound if the strength characteristic is greater than the toughness of their unit. I feel overall they are pretty solidly balanced, definitely harder to take out, though they won't resurrect models as they don't get an Arthesium. I feel like in general the Paladins might work a bit better with the Librarians, and maybe the Brotherhood Terminators with Drago, just given the fact that he's actually kind of likely to deliver them on the charge, and he can make good use of their lethal hits as well. Next up for our third Grey Knight list, this one was by Ben Facey, who used its take 5th at Da Winter War, going 4 and 1 against a field of around about 50 players. This one wasn't quite a tournament winning list, coming on stock in one game, but I thought it was really quite interesting as it's playing Grey Knights of an entirely different and off meta style, basically going for Dread Knight and Armager spam as opposed to taking any infantry pretty much. Interestingly enough, on the character side of things, there's a bunch of librarians just operating completely solo with their mortal wound shots. Between the three of them for 300 points, they'd be able to stack an average of around about 12 mortal wounds on whatever they try and focus down, which is pretty terrifying. And while they're pretty easy to kill comparatively when they get hit back, they're still not trivial to take down with their Terminator armor, and you still need some high AP weapons. And for 100 points, they're quite nice and cheap if you did need to expend one to do secondary objectives. One seems to have first to the fray again, so he could drop for early secondaries if needed. Otherwise, for objective support, there's a single strike squad, which again could mark an objective for sticky objectives. And then two units of servitors with multi-melters. They don't get any objective control, but could just be used to screen or go in strategic reserve to pop up and do secondaries once more. Then beyond that, it's all about the knights and dread knights. There's three regular Dread Knights with Psy Cannon, Incinerator and Greatsword. They can move pretty fast into battle, being able to advance, shoot and charge, which is pretty scary with the 6 inch advance move that the detachment gets. Good shooting for clearing out infantry, and fairly general purpose melee, even if it's not enormously strong for 185 points in my opinion. There's three Armature Warglaives to provide a bit of anti-tank muscle, with their really quite big hitting Thermal Spear attacks with Melter 2. They also take a bonus Melter Gun to double down on the anti-tank threat, and then finally there's two Grandmasters in Nemesis Dread Knights, Psycho and Incinerator again, one with the Great Sword and the Domino Liber Demonica for a plus one to wound, he should be a pretty massive threat against anything, and the other one with Psycho and Incinerator and Hammer, and he gets Inescapable Wrath, plus one to charge rolls for him, that means that if he bodged at a command point re-roll out of Deep Strike, he'd have around about a two-third chance of making a charge, and both of the Grandmasters can hit, really hit very hard against enemy heavies with their turn of massive re-rolls against them. Both of these should be a massive threat to enemy vehicles, which is what the Grey Knights need really. Really quite cool to see something very different still having some success. People do seem to be a bit down on the ability of the Dread Knight in general, and I feel like this one kind of shows they're not really that far behind and can still go a fair amount of distance. I still wouldn't be too surprised if Games Workshop offers them a points cut at some stage. Here's the profile for the Nemesis Dread Knight, 185 points for 13 wounds at toughness 8 with a 2 plus save. Most people certainly do take them with the Heavy Incinerator and Heavy Psy Cannon, giving you really quite a lot of AP-1 attacks. The Psy Cannon can at least threaten vehicles a little bit with Strength 10 and Damage 3, though the AP-1 does hurt against high saves quite a lot. The Great Sword does tend to be the most common melee weapon for them, Strength 10, AP-2 and Damage D6 for the Strike Profile. As mentioned, their special rule means that they can shoot and charge when they either advanced or fell back. In the Teleport Strike Force, that's quite big, given that they'd be moving 14 inches before that, so very, very fast. The Grandmaster version doesn't get that, and he's a bit pricier at 200 points. He gets basically the same stat line, but some slightly different special rules. Two CP stratagems cost one CP for him, and Surge of Wrath is that ability that they can trigger once per battle round, re-rolling hit, wound, and damage rolls meaning that they're often taken with the Nemesis Great Hammers, with their big damage D6 plus 1 which can benefit from that. They can take the enhancements which can help them out quite a bit, I feel like perhaps the biggest issue with these guys is delivering them into combat safely, as they don't have a defensive profile that's any better than the regular Dread Knight. Lastly, for the fourth list, we've got this one by Chase Chappell, who appears to have had some very good success with Grey Knights in transports, both a Land Raider Redeemer and a Storm Raven gunship, I noticed he'd managed to take home two Grand Tournament wins with this, which is very impressive indeed. This one being his list from Warhound GT at Game Grid. Five wins and topping an event of 60 players. This one again has the Caudal Drago and two Librarians. One of those taking the Sigil of Exigence for the Teleport Redeploy. But this one also loads up on Castell and Crow and 10 Purifiers with four Incinerators. 
absolutely monstrous infantry killing potential there between those incinerators and the purifying flame. I'd guess that they might be the one that's been delivered by the Storm Raven gunship perhaps. Might seem on paper like the better choice for them given that they're more about the shooting than they are about the close combat damage. Though I guess being in the Land Raider and being able to threaten both of them one after the other will be really quite scary as well. Otherwise for the Terminators for Drago and the Librarians there's a unit of Brotherhood Terminators and a unit of Paladins. I guess that means that the other Librarian is Ron Solo. Again there's a single strike squad with an incinerator for those sticky objectives and secondaries are supported by the Calidus Assassin jumping around the board to take points and things. Kind of cool to see both a Storm Raven and a Land Raider on the board and doing absolutely great. I feel like I've not seen them used by that many Grey Knights lists comparatively, though for the Land Raider in particular I can see that being really quite cool. The teleport tricks are all very well and good to jump things around the table and get you sort of close, but having something that can pretty reliably push a unit right into close combat is pretty nice. Otherwise though, that Purify squad does look incredibly scary, 130 points per 5 of them, or 260 per 10. They're the ones that basically come with a strike squad profile, minus OC2 and sticky objectives, and they just get a load of anti-infantry shooting up close. Purifying Flame for a single shot at strength 4, AP1, damage 1, with anti-infantry 2+, plus and ignores cover. A bunch of Storm Bolter fire, and then a bunch of Incinerator fire. And all of that gets a bit more dangerous if the squad gets injured, as you get the rule where it's plus one to hit if you've taken casualties, and plus one to wound as well if you're below half strength. With ten of them in the unit as well, their melee is very, very serious. Thirty attacks at strength six, AP two, and damage two won't be ignored by much by the heaviest and toughest stuff. Typically, if there's purifiers on the board, they're often being supported by Castell and Crow in Grey Knights lists. Seventy-five points for a fairly fighty character who gets devastating wounds on his force weapon attacks plus precision. He adds a bunch more purifying flame shots, and he adds one to the attacks of all the purifying flame in the unit as well. So I guess that's 24 shots all in all between theirs and his, never mind the storm bolters and incinerators and things. Between all that, they can absolutely maul infantry at close range, and then have serious melee threat to back it up, and they're perhaps one of the units that might be best for the 3-inch drop stratagem or mist of Dimos. Very, very dangerous, but maybe not all that durable comparatively. In any case, we'll leave that there for the Grey Knights today. Let me know how you Grey Knights have been faring on the table yourselves, and any insights on the army list. Always look forward to hearing more down in the comments below. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, where I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, then I would just like to mention that Allspex Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep all of these coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.